there's this garden um, in Alnwick, England that I'm kind of obsessed with. It's called the Poison Garden. <laughs> I love it. Field trip! Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? I want to go there so bad. Um, they cultivate around 100 varieties of plants that can be fatal to humans. So then not even just bad for, yeah. fatal. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. that sounds like, I, w I would want to like go there in like a nightgown, like under a full <laughs> <Right>? moon. <laughs> yeah. Apparently it's under 24 hour oh, surveillance. To, uh, yeah. You have to have a guided tour through. And I was reading either last year or the year before, something like seven or eight people passed out while they were on a tour oh, no. of it just from getting um, like a whiff of a certain flower Whoa. or something. So, yeah. um, <laughs> And it was, Sounds great. It was started in, or they started, um, I guess, cultivating this garden in like 95 or 96. I guess based on or inspired by the um, Medici poison gardens that were grown in Italy in the Victorian era. I don't know a whole lot, I guess, about that whole thing, but from my understanding, like anybody who was anybody in the Victorian era was getting poisoned and <laughs> probably from one of these plants. So there's tons of plants that can kill you that we grow in our gardens and use in landscaping that we never really think about. Buttercup, uh, castor beans, where what castor oil comes from, are highly toxic when in their raw form, the seeds. Foxglove, periwinkle, poinsettia. Um, periwinkle? Foxglove, mm -hmm. the other version of foxglove, isn't, isn't that digitalis? Yeah, digitalis. Yeah, they use it now to make uh, like medication to help with congestive heart failure. Yes. Um, but yeah, it can be highly toxic and was used to poison a lot of people back in the day. There's a whole <laughs> number of them, but I wanted to talk about three plants in particular that take this defense, I think, to like really badass and horrifying extremes. So the first is called Brungmansia, and it's a Solanaceae that's native to South America. And it contains a tropane alkaloids, which block any like neurotransmitter, Holy it's like crap. a neurotoxin. That's um, terrifying. Like and yeah, yeah. They're, it's, they're brutal. So this is one of the I'm Duchess I'm not only gonna who, kill you, I'm gonna kill you in the, on a horrible way. Yes, totally. The Duchess who started the poison garden. Uh, this is one of her fa what a favorite. Bee. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Um, what a badass! That's totally. what I should say, but I'm afraid of her. <laughs> so this is one of her favorite plants because apparently there are a lot of claims back in Victorian era of it being a really strong aphrodisiac. And so apparently women would keep these flowers on their card tables and just drop like a few grain of pollen strategically into people's drinks. Oh no. Um, but, but if you go too far, it can oh, have like no. really hallucinogenic I really like it. properties. So, um, no. so a lot of what I read of like old accounts, um, it sounds like a really awesome way to die. Like you are like super euphoric and then you just die. Oh, but um, more recent romantic. accounts that I have read <laughs> Uh, counter that to the extreme. Do you become do you become paralyzed? You become paralyzed, and then and yeah, you have crazy visual and auditory hallucinations. One man's paralysis is another man's euphoria. <laughs> I guess so. Um, Kinky. <laughs> apparently, the hallucinations are terrifying and can be fatal. There's documentation of him cutting off his penis and his tongue while on Brungmansia. One and then the other. I right? think that's so funny that <laughs> I know. you wouldn't be like, oh, because you can't be like, up. you know, like, yeah, well, I wouldn't do it at the first. same time. Yeah. yeah. I feel tough. like I am experiencing this plant right oh, now. Oh, like, another crazy thing. <laughs> so also uh, in Russia and, and some parts of India, this plant, uh, well, concentrations of this plant were called knockout drops, and they were essentially used as roofies? the first roofie. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, but now, nowadays, we them. use synthesized versions of the, these same tropane alkaloids to treat motion sickness and to keep people from over salivating during surgery. Whoa! Mm -hmm. And I did read in some native cultures they would use small amounts of it to induce vomiting if someone had like a parasite or something. So that's that's Brungmansia. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna pick. <laughs> the second plant that I wanted to talk about is called ma the manchineal tree or the little apple of death. I think it's also <laughs> known as like the world's most dangerous tree or the world's deadliest tree or something like that. It's fruit, just a bite of their fruit can be fatal. And the sap contains um, porbol, which is a compound that is a skin irritant. So apparently burning the wood from this tree can cause blindness. Oh and God. even just standing under it in the rain 
um, can cause really severe blistering. I've heard of that happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. That makes me feel like I can totally see how someone would be like, the spirits are angry at me. Yeah. You know, right? like if you're burning this yeah. wood and then you go blah, like, yeah. or like trying magic, to get out of the rain know? and then you're just like seared. Yeah, no good. And apparently the the blisters can last months and then the, the scarring and effects from that can last years. Luckily both, um, well I think the, this is uh, at least endangered in the wild. So I don't think you're gonna run I into too many it. manchineal yeah. trees. And then the final plant, um, is called Dendronide moroides, and it's known uh, as the gimpy gimpy or the suicide plant. Gimpy gimpy sounds so like... <laughs> I know. So innocuous. Yeah. And, like, sweet. So like teletubbies yeah. right? <laughs> So this plant has these huge spines that are made of silica, so they're essentially like glass, and when you rub against them, they're in the <laughs> nettle family. So if you can, okay. ex if you can ex like imagine a giant nettle, that's essentially what you're knocking yourself into. These silica spines will break off and embed in your skin, and they're basically like hypodermic needles, you know, they'll just keep pumping this this toxin in. Why so intense, plant? <laughs> <laughs> Why do we need this? The, there have been reports of, if you can't get these uh, spines out of your body, they can last. I read one report where someone after seven years was still experiencing symptoms. Oh so, my God. And many, many reports of people who had been touched by them have had uh, symptoms for many years. So it's not something that's easily gotten yeah. rid of. But how you do get rid of it is with hydrochloric acid. <gasps> so you're essentially trading one terrible thing for another. Yeah. Um, Where does that grow? Where does that grow? Yeah. This <laughs> is... <laughs> In charge of international VidCon, she could go anywhere. This Australia is, is scary. Australia yes. is so, out to kill you. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Bring your hydrochloric um, acid. All right, I will. <laughs> because of the really long-lasting effects, that's why the plant gets the name, the suicide plant, people just because a lot of it. people just <gasps> oh, off wow. themselves because oh they God. can't take the pain anymore. This is brought to you by poisons. Mm. <laughs> What's in your poison garden? We hope you enjoyed this snippet of Holy Fucking Science. If you would like more, you can see the full episode at youtube.com slash holyfuckingscience. That's right. Holy Fucking Science is a podcast about science that is not for children. It contains mild violence, swearing, alcohol consumption, and sometimes the science isn't super vetted, so don't share it in the classroom. For more Holy Fucking Science, we are on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music, also other places where you might be able to find podcasts. Thank you for watching.